Uh, good morning. Happy Wednesday of Holy Week or Passion Week. Uh, hope that you're doing well and, and uh, have been able to see what Arnest did on Monday and Craig did yesterday. Both really good. Um, I'm not sure why I jumped on uh, batting third Wednesday of Holy Week, but uh, but I did. And even as I was leaving the staff meeting that morning, I thought that hey, you picked the worst possible day to, to share anything on. Um, tomorrow we've got Rachel bat and clean up and then uh, Jeff will sum things up on Good Good Friday and then of course we look forward to a wonderful Easter together on Sunday. Um, and the reason I say that is I love the whole Passion Week, the whole entering into Jerusalem and the fanfare and Jesus showing his, his passion and somewhat of a righteous temper in the temple and the things that happened that week. I mean, you can you could turn the whole thing. In fact, I'm, I'm a huge fan of the, the show The Chosen, and I have a hunch that they're going to take an entire season with uh, the Passion Week. That's just my guess on that. Um, one of my favorite verses is in John 12, 21, and, and that's that's kind of right after the, the triumphal entries happened. He's come in, and people from everywhere are coming in. They're throwing the palm branches down and everything. And um, It says there's a couple of Greeks came up, and they were talking to the disciples, and they said they wanted to see Jesus. In fact, the translation that I read most says, we would see Jesus. And why that's important to me, you see this right here? See the little, we would see Jesus? The first time I ever preached a sermon, my dad had left that on the pulpit for me to see, and I love it. So that doesn't have anything to do with what I'm going to talk about, but it's a cool story. Um, what I do know, and what we do know fairly certainly about the, the Passion Week and, and what happened on Wednesday is that as the disciples of Jesus were resting in Bethany, Judas probably wasn't there. He was busy making a deal with the Pharisees. And I want to look at this text. Um, it's it's horrible. Now, Luke puts it kind of differently than Mark. Luke says that Satan entered into, um, into Judas. And... and Truly, that is it. But I think we have indications from earlier on that um, that Judas had kind of some stuff going on anyway. He was, you know, pilfering from the the budget, the the money of the disciples. But it, here's what this this simply says. And this is in Mark 14. Then Judas Iscariot, one of the twelve, went to the chief priests to betray Jesus. They were delighted to hear this and promised to give him money. So he watched for an opportunity to hand him over. And we know that he got 30 pieces of silver for his trouble. And we know that the Pharisees took advantage of that in the garden and arrested Jesus. Uh, they had been looking for that perfect time to catch him and to do away with him without causing too much of a stir. Now, I've often wondered, you know, the text will say that uh, it's better, better for him never to have been born, Judas, that is. And I get that. But I'm wondering what brought him to a point where he wanted to betray Jesus. Um, in a couple of the Gospels, that little blurb that Judas went to talk to the Pharisees comes right after Jesus is anointed with the expensive perfume. And if you'll recall, Judas kind of makes a big deal out of that, saying, hey, we could have, could have helped a whole lot of poor people with this. Uh, one text will say well, he said that because he was taking money out of the money bag. Um, what I think is going on is what all the disciples were dealing with at some level. They had expectations of Jesus that were not accurate with what Jesus came to do. So even from the beginning, as they started following Jesus, they're looking for a king, a deliverer from Rome, someone to restore the nation of Israel to its power and prominence. And that's not what Jesus came to do. It was more important. And they didn't understand that. And I think maybe Judas finally got a belly full and said, you know what, I, this isn't working out like I thought, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to turn him over to his enemies, and I'm going to make a buck doing it. Now, here's why I say this. Even, look, even after the resurrection of Jesus, some of his disciples are saying, so are, is, it, is it now that you're going to restore the kingdom of Israel? They're still looking for this earthly kingdom thing, and, and I think sometimes we're that dense. And so here's what I want to throw at us today. And I'll just speak from personal experience. Sometimes my expectations of Jesus are to meet the needs and desires of my heart. 
And I don't know that that would be restoring a nation to anything, but it might be something that is way off base from what he actually has planned for me. As I consider this, I think about how I pray, what I ask for. Sometimes do I treat God and Jesus and the Spirit as that magic Aladdin's lamp that I'm hoping for good wishes, when in reality, and I promise you, I've, I've learned this the hard way, reality is if I trust in Jesus and his leading, things turn out better than I could have imagined in the first place. Now, as we consider where this plays in to this week, this final week of Jesus' physical life uh, before his crucifixion, I just want us to ask, you know, what, what is your expectation from Jesus? You know, are you like the disciples that are wondering, you know, when is it you're going to give me the things I've asked for? Or are you... Um, demanding or disappointed when you don't get the things that you prayed about or asked for in in Jesus' name, or, or maybe it's our hearts aren't prepared uh, to understand that Jesus has something more, better, different, yes, but as one of the phrases in the Chosen series says, get used to different, and I think that's an important thing for us to think about. So, on Wednesday of the Passion Week. We know that Judas made a deal. We know that uh, that deal got followed through on and it cost Judas his life on his own. And I just want to leave us with this, this thought. As we consider our relationship with Jesus, we need to remind ourselves that the expectations we put on him might not be what he's doing in us, through us, for us, with us. Just something for us to think about. I hope that this has been a very powerful week for you. Um, I love that we're, we're taking time to do this this week and just share some thoughts, and I hope it's encouraging. I hope you feel blessed by it. And most of all, I hope that as Jesus leads you, you follow him and trust him.